before the dinosaurs, before fish swam in the oceans, before insects crawled on land, Earth was a completely alien planet. No forests, no birds, no footprints on the ground, only oceans, vast, dark, and silent. But from that gloomy abyss, something began to move. A creature no one had ever seen. It had no fins like fish, no legs like insects, no bones, just a gliding body, eyes made of thousands of complex lenses and two scythe-like appendages dragging through the water. It was not born to live in peace. It was born to hunt. And it was the first predator in the history of our planet. Its name was Anomalocaris. Would you believe that one of Earth's very first predators once fooled the entire scientific world for nearly a century? The first fossils were unearthed from the ancient Burgess Shale in Canada in the late 19th century. But instead of one complete creature, scientists believed they had discovered three entirely separate organisms. First, a circular fossil with twisted gear-like ridges. It was thought to be the mouth of a type of jellyfish. Second, a flat paddle-like structure, assumed to be the tail of some unknown primitive fish. And third, a strange curved appendage resembling a shrimp's claw, believed to belong to a type of arthropod. Each part was named, classified, and stored in different museums around the world. For decades, no one realized they were looking at fragmented remains of a single giant monster from the Cambrian Seas. Not until the 1980s did the truth finally surface when a complete fossil was found, revealing a full body, head, trunk, tail, frontal appendages, and that bizarre round mouth. Those scattered pieces? They turned out to be curved hunting limbs like sickles, a broad, fin-like tail for steering, and a spinning, circular mouth lined with hard teeth. The final piece had fallen into place, and the full picture emerged. A creature unlike anything alive today. A predator with no precedent in the history of life. It was named Anomalocaris, literally the strange shrimp. Strange? Absolutely. But a shrimp? Not even close. Because this creature was not a shrimp, not a fish, not a jellyfish, but a member of a long extinct evolutionary branch, one that diverged entirely from the tree of modern animals. A misfit born in the dawn of time and the first true terror of Earth's ancient oceans. If there's one word to describe Anomalocaris, it's this. Bizarre, yet perfectly efficient. No bones, no armor, no fins, no sharp teeth. And yet, it became the apex predator of the Cambrian Seas. At over a meter long, it was a giant among creatures that measured only a few centimeters. But what truly terrified its prey wasn't its size, it was its eyes. Each of its eyes held up to 16,000 tiny lenses, compound eyes, capable of detecting light, motion, and shapes with incredible precision. Its vision may have been even sharper than that of a modern dragonfly. Its movement system was just as unique. Dozens of soft flaps lined both sides of its body, paddling in rhythm, allowing it to glide smoothly and shift direction with ease. And its deadliest weapon? Two hooked appendages, long and covered in spikes, that could grab prey and drag it toward a spinning circular mouth beneath its body. That mouth couldn't pierce hard shells, but it could crush soft tissue or suck the flesh out from within a hunting strategy both brutal and clever. Altogether, Anomalocaris was a mobile killing machine. No bones, no armor, but fast, precise, and ruthless enough to dominate an entire era. More than 500 million years ago, a silent arms race was unfolding beneath the waves. 
On one side, a giant, agile predator with scythe-like limbs and super-powered eyes, Anomalocaris. On the other, millions of small, slow-moving creatures crawling along the sea floor, armed with a simple but effective defense, a hard shell. They were trilobites, the most common arthropods of the Cambrian world. These creatures were sluggish, often hiding beneath soft sediments or wedging themselves into rocky cracks. No fangs, no tentacles, no poison. Just a tough outer armor, like a miniature suit of armor against would-be attackers. But to Anomalocaris, that shell meant nothing. When its compound eyes spotted a twitch in the sand, it darted forward like a ghost. Its hook-shaped limbs fanned out, swooping down and snatching the trilobite in an instant. The battle was brief. No roars, no blood. Just the silent sound of death in the deep. Many trilobite fossils have been found with neatly rounded cracks right in the middle of their backs. The size and shape match perfectly with the circular, tooth-lined mouth of Anomalocaris. But there's a mystery. Scientists believe Anomalocaris's mouth wasn't strong enough to crush hard shells. So, how did it leave those marks? One theory suggests it used its powerful arms to squeeze and break the shell before feeding. Another proposes that it didn't crush the shell at all. Instead, it slipped its limbs between the plates, pulling out the soft tissue inside. Either way, trilobites, once thought to be nearly invincible, stood no chance against the ocean's first true killer. This clash marked a turning point in the history of evolution. Predators began to drive prey to evolve, and prey, in turn, forced predators to grow stronger. Trilobites developed thicker shells, sharper spines, but Anomalocaris grew faster, smarter. A wordless arms race had begun between hunter and hunted and it all started in the Cambrian Seas. Among all the bizarre features of Anomalocaris, its spinning circular mouth remains the most puzzling to scientists. Shaped like a fan or propeller with rows of tooth-like plates arranged in a radial pattern, it was once believed to be a primitive meat grinder like the jaws of an ancient shark. But then came a surprising discovery it couldn't close completely. The plates weren't strong enough to crush hard shells like those of trilobites. This raised a crucial question. Was it truly a weapon or something designed for a different kind of feeding? One theory suggests Anomalocaris didn't crush, but sucked. It would grab its prey with its hooked limbs, then bring that spinning mouth close to suck out the soft tissue like a living vacuum tube. Some paleontologists even compare it to a Cambrian vacuum cleaner, feasting on worms, soft-bodied creatures, or even nutrient-rich mud. If true, then Anomalocaris wasn't just a trilobite hunter. It was a tactical omnivore, able to handle a variety of food sources in early oceans. Whether it sucked, shredded, or crushed, that spinning mouth was likely the last thing any prey ever saw before vanishing into silent darkness. And even now, with hundreds of fossil specimens, how it really worked remains a mystery buried in time. Because sometimes, what frightens us most isn't how something looks, but not knowing what it's truly capable of. Anomalocaris was once the ruler of the ancient oceans, a creature over one meter long, with advanced compound eyes, flexible limbs, and a deadly spinning mouth. But then, it vanished. Not from an asteroid impact, but through a slow, silent extinction stretched across time. The very weapons that once made it unstoppable, its swirling mouth, hooked limbs, 
and soft, unarmored body became fatal flaws as prey began to evolve. Trilobites grew spines, thicker shells, and bentha creatures developed stronger armor. Anomomocaris couldn't adapt quickly enough. It lacked bones, lacked armor, and couldn't cope with changing environments, from shifting temperatures and ocean currents to dwindling food sources. Smaller, faster, more adaptable species took over its place, and eventually, Anomalocaris fell out of the evolutionary race. No descendants, no legends, only scattered fossils in stone. Yet this very creature was the first to ignite the age of predators, laying the groundwork for all animal evolution that followed. Its death may have been the price that allowed life to move one step further. Anomalocaris vanished from the earth more than half a billion years ago, but its legacy still lingers, woven into the very fabric of how life functions today. Before Anomalocaris, life was mostly passive, grazing on algae, hiding in the mud, living slow and simple. But when it appeared, everything changed. Anomalocaris was the first predator with a strategy. It forced prey to evolve, to grow shells, develop spines, learn to flee, learn to hide. And from that moment on, an eternal cycle was born. The hunter grows stronger. The hunted grows smarter. Only the adaptable survive. Without Anomalocaris, there may have been no sharks. Without sharks, no killer whales. Without predators, the delicate balance of nature as we know it might not exist. It is not the ancestor of any creature alive today, but it was the first seed of what we now call the predator. And that is a legacy that cannot be buried. More than 500 million years later, we look into its fossils, and what we see is a beginning, not an end. Because the real question still remains unanswered. If a creature like Anomalocaris once roamed the Earth, what else still lurks in the deep that we have yet to discover?